Okay, welcome back, everybody. Um, now we're on to our next session, which is I break things a day in the, as a Sakai QA tester. So we get a little bit of slice of life in the uh, the K QA testing arena. So uh, today's session will be presented by Christina Schwiebert, who's the Instructional Design and Distance Learning Coordinator at Northwest State Community College. Christina is a member of the JIRA triage team and a dedicated QA tester. Um, just a couple of quick reminders. Please remember to stay muted um, unless you're actually speaking. And if you have any questions, um, please enter them in the chat and we will relay them over to Christina at the end of the session. All right, take it away. All right, uh, thanks so much. Can everyone hear me and see my presentation okay? Yes. Okay, excellent. So as Wilma said, I'm Christina Schwiebert, Instructional Design and Distance Learning Coordinator. And in my great amount of spare time, I, uh, part of the Sakai QA community, which means I enjoy getting to break things. That is actually my reputation within the uh, Sakai QA group that I can manage to break um, just about anything given enough time and effort. So what's the role of QA in the Sakai community? It is a counter to the developers. I was told this was sketched from life of Dr. Chuck and Andrea, our QA team lead, working on Sakai Plus. The developers work on how they can make it, the QA testers, how I can break it. Why? Because of um, this joke that was posted on Twitter several years ago, a QA engineer walks into a bar, orders a beer, orders zero beers, orders nine, 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 nine beers, orders a lizard, orders negative one beers, orders a random string of letters. The first real customer walks in and asks where the bathroom is. The bar bursts into flames, killing everyone. Now, Sakai is not going to burst into flames, killing everyone. But the truth of that is, what's tested gets fixed. What doesn't get tested tends to bite us. So why am I trying to break Sakai? I work on breaking Sakai for my faculty and students. Because if I can break it before it gets into the live version that we're using, it can be fixed before then. I break it so the developers then can make those changes that are needed to, to help make everything better. So it's not the faculty and the students that are finding those bugs, it's me. So Sakai QA testing comes in two primary flavors. We have regression testing, uh, which is normally tool specific and follows some detailed test scripts that we have written out. When the test scripts are built out um, with enough detail, you don't have to be an expert in that particular tool. Just know enough to be able to identify when something isn't right, when something looks wrong, and then to be able to create a JIRA ticket for any newly identified issues. And then in our test scripts, we record each step completion, the results, changes that need to be made, anything like that. And then we also have JIRA verification, where we're testing the fixes for specific bugs or new features. We test those on the various QA servers. We follow the test plans that are put in those tickets. And we mostly have to recognize if that issue is fixed or not, or partially fixed reopen the JIRA if appropriate, or create a new one if that's needed. So I'm not just here to read a PowerPoint, but to actually you know, do some QA with you guys. So we have, uh, I just took advantage of the Poll Everywhere sponsorship, and so I've got a poll out there. What tool should we test? I have four different uh, test scripts pulled up. So if you'll hop on the pollev.com slash Christina SCH390, you get a choice of four um, test scripts that we can go through for a little bit. 
The options I grabbed were the assignments with rubrics, the PA system, gradebook calculations, and lessons. Dr. Chuck, I did not grab Samago because that has about four test scripts and they're all beasts. Thanks, Dave. Give you guys just another second to decide what we wanted to play with. We're rubrics are in the lead, but lessons keeps bouncing up a little bit. PA system loses. No one cares about the PA system. Probably because it's only the uh, admins who play with it. All right, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. You guys had to make this difficult. All right. So it looks like assignments and lessons are tied. So I'll just have to pick one of the two. Let's go break something. Uh, lessons is the test script I have up, so we'll play with lessons. So I'm sorry if it's hard to read. In order to have both windows on the same screen, I had to shrink it down pretty tight. But this is an example of what one of our test scripts looks like. We have each tab being a set of tests with, in, with the steps, the expected results, and any known issues that go on. So I've got a test site here on one of the trunk master ser um, servers. So this is the most cutting edge version of Sakai. Let's start. So it says as the instructor site info, go to manage tools, check the box for lessons and click continue. So that is to site info, manage tools. Continue. The customized tool page displays with the option to enter a title, maximum length 20 characters, and a drop down menu to add more lesson tools. The default title that appears is Lessons. Type something there. Let me say page one. So back. Page one. Helps if I actually read the next script. I keep clicking buttons. Page one, replacing the default lessons title. Select two more. Page two, click the red X. Goodbye, page two. All right, got page one and page two added. Click on page one, getting started with lessons appears. Click add content, add sub page. It says enter a title using any of the forbidden characters to make sure that it yells at me properly. Did not so this is what it does is you're finding things. Is it supposed to do that? Go back, do it again. It's 
looking at a lot of the nitty gritty things. Aha. Not a normal quote, but a back quote. Picky, picky, picky. Uh-oh. I do believe I found a bug. That just stopped responding. So if I refresh, can I do that again? Add sub page. Yells and all the buttons are dead. We broke it. So I'm going to just continue on for a second. So page one now has a sub page. Continue on to the next page. As part one just being creating the pages again, so I'm going down to two. Add pages via lessons, add more pages. Three. We have some pages. Let's just play with the layout and style. So I'm just trying a few things around. Sometimes if the test scripts are set up to give us very, very clear um, individual steps and others, it's um, kind of like this is just play with some different options for a while. Try some different ones around. Try some different uh, options, different settings, and see, make sure everything looks right. Now, I was going to continue doing the test for a while, but I do want to go back to my presentation for just a little bit because I broke it, now what? So now, question is, can I reproduce it with that uh, particular problem I found? Yes, I could. Does it occur in a related area? Let's see. I'm going to add a new page on the left and use the forbidden characters. It doesn't have a problem with it being on the left, it's only the sub pages. The other questions are, you know, are there errors that appear in the browser console or server logs? Um, does this affect other versions of Sakai? This is on trunk. Does it affect 23, 22, 21? And then is there an existing JIRA for this problem? So Dave and chat, part of breaking things mantra is to find them for them to be fixed. And is the issue specific to the tool, browser, role, set of permissions? Sometimes the characters you enter, um, I discovered a bug with resources a while ago uploading new versions of an existing file where it did not like uploading new versions if there was special characters in the file um, name. 
If there were no special characters, it worked fine. If there was a special character, it would not upload a new version. Dr. Chuck bets there's some fun stuff in the browser console. So we'll see. Browser console, um, if you right click and pick inspect, you have the option of pulling up da, 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 console, which shows any errors going on. So add content, add subpage, page with forbidden characters. Dr. Chuck, you are wrong. There is no errors popping up in that console. So that time there was nothing. Sometimes there are some very interesting errors and that helps the developers figure out what is going on. So the last question is always, is there an existing JIRA? And is, is there an existing open JIRA for this issue? So I've got JIRA open too. So we are going to do a search. So I always try to use the filter options to find things. So if I go to more component, this is affecting lessons. This is not just in the last few days. Search for page, characters. Let's see what we can find. Special characters in name. Blocks users from having special characters in a subpage name. However, if a user creates a subpage, well, that's not the same one. That's related. Backslash, pipe, breadcrumbs does not look like there is a known issue for that. So we'll get to create a JIRA. One of the other questions is, does it occur in other versions? So the first thing I have to do is bounce to one of the other QA servers. I just went to QA23, which is the Sakai 23 test server. And We'll log in. There's no sites for this for the generic instructor yet, so we'll just have to quit create a site. When you do this enough times, you get very quick at going through this. So I've just created a site. We will add just the lessons tool because that's all I'm caring about right now. Up in. Add content, add subpage, subpage with forbidden characters. All right, it doesn't work on 23 either. We'll keep moving backwards, QA22. Now here's one thing that a lot of you guys have noticed, there is the big um, user interface change between 22 and 23. So there are a lot of issues we have found that affects um, 23 and 24, but of course doesn't affect um, I don't want to mess up someone else's page, but it looks like they just have an image there. So we'll just add a sub page below that and see if it works. All right, so it works perfectly fine in 22. It yells at me, but lets me cancel out of it. So 
this got to me. So my, the questions I ask when I find a bug, can we reproduce it? Does it occur in related areas? Are there errors? What other versions does this affect? And is there an existing JIRA? I've gotten to look for all that. We can reproduce it. It doesn't occur in any other related areas. There's no errors in the browser console. It affects 20, it affects trunk and 23. And there is not an existing JIRA for this issue. So if you find a bug, we create a new JIRA. The fields, the JIRA fields that we care about when we're working on this is the summary, which is the short description of the problem, the description field, which is the full um, detailed description, a test plan, so our exact steps for reproducing the issue and confirming that it's fixed. Whenever possible, we want to include um, the expected or desired behavior and a description of the current problematic behavior. So when we're going back and testing it again, it's very easy for us to see if it is fixed properly. The components field, um, when I was searching for the JIRA, those are the tools it affects. The affected versions, what versions of Sakai this um, affects. Priority, we have four um, priorities for bugs. Blocker, which normally involves um, data loss, making a site unusable, grade problems. These are the issues that need to be fixed, um, the very high priority issues to get fixed. Things do not continue until these are fixed. Critical um, is errors that appear for users, things that render a feature unusable. And these are still very high priority to get fixed, but not as high priority as blocker. Major um, is normally errors that have a workaround, problems that don't have a huge impact on actual site use, and things that just give errors in the logs, not to the users. And then minor is normally for cosmetic issues. So if you've got buttons that are not aligned properly, that's a minor one. And then we have labels that we can throw, we can attach to tickets. Um, QA dev needed is a flag that says the normal QA team can't normally test this on the nightly QA servers because it requires a proper to be a property to be set or it's related to um, things compiling properly things that it's not something an end user can see easily. There's the TL and UX labels. Those are to flag an issue to be brought up at the combined teaching and learning and user experience group, which meets every other week. And that is a group of instructional designers, faculty, and other end users that provide a lot more insight on what is best for the end users. And then we also have a label for screen reader QA needed, which is used to flag an accessibility issue that should be tested by one of our QA team that uses a screen reader. So we are going to quick create one for this. It is a bug summary. Lessons, sub page with so I'm going to call that probably a major issue. It can be, it has a workaround refreshing the page. Components is lessons. Effects version is trunk, which is currently 24 in JIRA and 23. Description. If Back on the test plan and just copy. 
the example of the forbidden characters. So I just provided a brief description of what it is doing. All right. And then test plan is the steps to reproduce it. So add lessons to a site, add a add content, add subpage, enter a Page name with a hidden character. Able to correct. I'm just going to quick get a screenshot. To attach to that because as I said, screenshots help. Make everything clear. It really doesn't need a label, so there we go. And then in here, in our test script, I marked this step failed. And I note down the new JIRA. But we can't cancel or modify the subpage name once we hit that. So everything else worked. So as I'm, I should have been doing this as I was going through the first time, but as you go through on the test scripts, we mark things that pass and we mark things that fail. So now I'm going to Go back to my presentation for a bit. The other, so you get to see what happens when we do the regression scripts and we find bugs. The other side of QA testing is the JIRA verification. So there's a couple, there's a handful of JIRA statuses that actually matter to the QA group. Um, awaiting review is newly created JIRAs. After they're reviewed, they are open. That's when the developers do their work. Once the developers um, have decided that an issue has been fixed, they change the status to resolved with the fixed flag. There's a couple other um, flags that can be used for resolved. Something can be resolved as a duplicate if there's another ticket for that same issue. Something can be resolved as a non-issue if that's actually the way things were designed to work. But that is the moment when the QA GR verification occurs on the trunk server, the master server. We go in and we make sure that it, it actually is resolved, that it is fixed, that everything is working as expected. And then the QA team changes the status to verified. Once the status is verified, then we start looking at the status for each version. So 
the status for a version. So the 23 status or the 22 status gets set to merged when that fix is put into the version, when Earl does that work. And that's when QA jumps in again and tests that fix on that old, on that previous version of Sakai. Once we change, once we test it there, we change that status from merged to QA verification pass. And we do that for every version that that issue affects. Once that is all done, then we're good. So challenge, the, the one thing we have to always know when we're verifying JIRAs is what server we go to test on. So there are JIRA filters we use, and we also look at the overall um, JIRA status. So if we're looking at the filter that's named uh, 24 resolved, we test that on trunk. 23.x needs verification, gets tested on QA23. 22x needs verified, gets tested on QA22. And for the JIRA status, um, as I said, if the overall status is resolved um, with the fixed flag, we test that on trunk. If the 23 status is merged, we test it on QA23. If the 22 status is merged, we test it on QA22. And if the 21 status is merged, we test it on QA21. The full list of all of the test servers is on nightly2.sakaiproject.org. And I have just the list of the servers there. Um, you saw I typed them in just when I was going in to test it, just because the QA teams are in those so often we have them pretty well saved. So then the question for verification, it JIRA verification, sorry, stuttering, is, is this really fixed? So I'm going to go to the filters I've got starred. 24 resolved. These are the things that are fixed on trunk and need to be verified by the QA team. So what have we got here? Sometimes you go through and you pick ones based just on how much time you've got to test or what tools you know. Um, the most, and sometimes it's just what things you feel like that day. Mm -hmm. What do I feel like? This one looks familiar. So this is one I created. And it is now fixed. So this one it was just fixed recently. So it might not be a good one to test because it was just done this morning. This one is a little older. Changing passwords and admin is broken. Does not happen on 23, it just affects 24. Well, this one looks like a very simple one to test. Log in as admin, go to users, try to change its password. We'll to test that one. So, on back on trunk. And then
users. We'll create a new user for this one, just so I don't mess up anyone else's testing. By user. Make sure we can change the password. And then we'll make sure that password actually took. Oops, I type the right one. All right, admin was able to change the password and then make sure that this user is able to change their password again too. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've got to enter current password. Helps if I follow the instructions. All right. So now I can go back to this Jira. I change the status to test to verified. Let's say I tested. Um, that server. In the comments, we always include what server and what build we tested on because every time um, there's new code in there, that build changes. So it helps us pretty much have that timestamp, that moment of where it is, which fixes might have got put in afterwards or before. So now that one's verified. There's no, since it only affects 24, not 23, it's not merged to there. So this one will be considered done and fixed. Um, once it gets, once that uh, goes through again. So Jira, ver Jira verification is ensuring that an issue is truly fixed. So I know any anytime you go into a live demonstration, it was a little it's a little chaotic. This one was. I found a couple bugs, didn't expect. But if you at all are interested in learning more about QA or want to join in the fun, we have the QA planning call scheduled every Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern time in the big blue button QA room. And we have the QA test fest every Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern time, also in the big blue button QA room. And we have lots of resources um, for those who are interested in getting started in QA. It doesn't require a ton of technical knowledge. It doesn't require a lot of experience. It just requires a willingness to get your hands in there and uh, break something. All right, great. Well, thank you, Christina, for a terrific live demo. And I thought it was awesome that you found some bugs there because we got to see it in action live. Um, so I hope those of so, you who so are well interested will, um, you know, not be intimidated. It's not that hard. Um, and sometimes it's kind of fun to break stuff. Wilma? So, yeah, Dr. Chuck? Uh, while Christine was talking, I already fixed the bug. Do you want to see it? <laughs> That's pretty awesome. See, it can be just that fast. <laughs> you want to see it? If you, sure. me, if you give me five minutes and let me share screen, okay. I will show you the bug fix for Christina. Then we could push it to master. We could review it. 
and then we could test them. So, okay. Well, Ready? We're, we're standing between people and lunch. So if you want to stay on, I'll I can make you co-host and you can take your time. Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, I'll, it'll be quick. I already fixed it. Ready? Sure. Okay. So here we are. You're seeing my uh, screen, right? Yes. Okay. So, um, so this is it. I assigned it to myself once I figured out. Um, I opened it so that, um, and we'll start progress. That way that other people know that I'm working on it. So, you know, Earl or Adrian or Kunal doesn't stop, start, start working on it. So, um, so I, um, I quickly went, where's my Sakai? Oh, there we are. I quickly went into Sakai and I went into this ad content, ad sub page that she did. And I did an inspect element. Ah, not that. Doop. I did an inspect element on the create button. And I found that it calls this code called check sub page form and then returns it. Okay. So I went into uh, lesson builder and I said grep minus r check sub page form. I want to find out what file that's in. And it's in this file called uh, showpage.js. And so then I go into showpage.js. Oops. Showpage.js. And I go to uh, check sub page. Now I've already fixed it. So when it was broken, there's this code that I just can look at because it looks like, so what it did is it's about to look at all that stuff, but it disabled all the controls and turned on a spinner. And, and then it's gonna like return false to says things are bad, things are bad, things are bad, and here's when it's good. So I'm like, ah, how about if I don't disable the spinner until we know that it's good and we're about to submit the form? So I just moved a line of code, okay? I just, the, the check of the spinner, was checking, it was disabling the form controls, whether or not the data was correct or not. Okay. So now I can do get diff and you can see the change that I made, right? I deleted this line and I added this line. I recompiled and I've already done that. Okay. So it's all been recompiled. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to add, add a sub page, Christina, No. And then I say create. And look, I keep my buttons. And I say Christina exclamation. And I create. And it works. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I am going to actually check this code into Sakai. Get checkout. Minus B. So we create what's called a branch. Yeah, maybe I need to type checkout. And then I say commit minus A. So I'm sending it to a branch. Fix special characters in subpage. Get push. Now I'm sending this to my repository, not to Sakai itself. I'm working in a CSEV repository. Origin SAC 4953. And now if I go into GitHub, my GitHub will, if I go into Sakai, it instantaneously detected that I created a proposed change. And now I'm going to send it to the main repo. And so I'm now I'm sending a proposed change to our queue of changes to be reviewed. So if we go into the pull requests, these are all of the things that are to be reviewed. So if you look at this, it's going to compile and run a bunch of QA tests, see if I made any typos. Okay. And, and then we go into a core meeting and we will look at this and we'll say, oh, it looks like Chuck knows what he's doing. And we'll then merge that. I could merge this. Oops. No, 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 no. GitHub. I could force merge it, but I'm not going to because then I'll let our process go where this would be where the software developers would review whether or not, and they can just come here and comment and 
say this looks good, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's the process by which we developers propose a fix. And if you now look at the JIRA, you will all notice that the status has changed and there's a pull request. There's a branch, there's a pull request, et cetera, et cetera. And so we are, the next thing to do would be to have a bunch of developers get on and review this, approve my work. And then I would send it into the actual master. And then at that night, our master would get re redone and then Christina could go and revise it again. So I will stop sharing there because I used four of your minutes. Um, <laughs> Christina, what do you think? Looks like I'm going to have some more testing to do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you guys got a special bonus of the uh, the developer side of fixing Ajira. So that was awesome. And, and it was a real live bug that we fixed live. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> thanks, Dr. Chuck. And thanks, Christina. Um, right now we have a 20 minute break um, for lunch. And at 1245, we'll be back for trivia. So hopefully those of you who want to compete for prizes, um, be sure to be back at 1245 in the trivia contest room. And we'll have some Sakai trivia for you coming up. So have a good lunch. I'll have to eat fast so the reigning trivia champion is back on. <laughs> <laughs>